Welcome back, Achievers, to your Easy Achieving Game Podcast for the week of December 20th, the holiday season. Happy holidays for all, everyone who supports them. Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, etc. Thank you so much for joining me today. We had a bit of like a snafu or something, right? If you've keeping up with Twitter, X, whatever you'd like to call it. Uh, or just the general news that you know that the Insomniac leaks happen, which started a conversation of both what were in the leaks and then as well uh, the way we discuss them and completely started an entire dialogue. Uh, some civil, mostly not, as everyone knows, I think, and are used to these things kind of happening in the game industry. Uh, usually there's two giant dichotomies of thought uh one saying absolutely no one saying absolutely yes and you know just kind of arguments in between i feel like this was a bit more in the middle than usual although there were a few things that seemed uh interesting and i want to bring up everything and we're going to be talking about all of that in the news today now before I get into what I'm talking about today, which we'll be covering the leaks, and this is actually going to be just an episode just on the Insomniac Leaks 1, because I know people do not want to actually partake in the leaks. I understand that a lot of people view um, the games industry as somewhat different than other industries like movies and these things where they like being surprised about things. I've come to understand I do not agree but I understand that that is a lot of people's uh, interest and want out there, right? I imagine you wouldn't have even clicked on the video, but just in case, I will not be covering this on a regular show. Of course, there might be references. I will not be blurring anything out in normal shows, but I will try and maybe give buffers or something. That will be something I have to think about later on. And we'll all go through it together. And of course, this is an open dialogue. Let me know what you want seen throughout the regular episodes. So that's number one. Number two, of course, I'll be covering the leaks here. I will be having timestamps. Sorry, timestamps. On the show, one will be for the leaks. One will be for the discourse around the leaks. And then my overall thoughts and everything, right? I've done full write-ups on both things. You can skip around if you'd like. You can... uh, partake in all of the leaks uh i did not to specify what i'm covering in the specific leaks i will not be covering everything one that would probably be a three hour show i don't think anyone actually wants to read every single part of the leak because not necessarily just because it was leaked doesn't mean it's interesting uh and a couple other things one i don't think there is anything really interesting on for instance saying that a upcoming game is this many missions with this much expected in it with this many side quests this is how much total time is in the game that will not be happening here of course you can go to any sources out there and figure these informations out but i will not be covering full specifics here i will be doing more broad uh in my opinion more interesting discussions on the specifics of some of the leaks but will not be going trudging through every single leak i have seen a lot of it not everything uh as I did not piece myself through the files. I just went individually to a bunch of different places. I will be sourcing that very soon. But aside from that, let's see. I think I covered everything I wanted. Of course, we talk about the discourse and everything like that. Discussed how we'll be discussing the leaks again. I think I've been pretty fair with what I'm covering here. And we'll be talking about why I feel I should be covering this and what that means for one the show and two my opinion on these leaks moving forward as this kind of invoked a entire dialogue around these sorts of and it's i keep saying the word leaks i think that's just something we can all agree on it's not technically a leak it's more of a security breach that then funneled uh everything through ransom sort of i don't know it's really hard to to describe sorry random cut there had to go help help the dog dog not important um i was talking about of course uh the open dialogue that has kind of started through the leaks i want to discuss that here of course i want to discuss it with you at home or at work whatever you tend to be 
uh, let me know both in the comments and at my Twitter at EVM9000. I've actually decided really just to not talk about this until this video because I wanted to really stew on my thoughts. I wanted to gather everyone else's thoughts, weigh them, decide what I thought. Everyone knows my idea of what leaks are. And again, this is not really a leak. It's more of like a security breach that was then released without getting ransom. But we'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, for easy conversation, I will be calling it a leak. I understand that's not technically what it is, but I think it's easier to just call it that uh, because semantics and all these. I think I'm done with the intro to this. Uh, of course, hopefully you're entering this with an open mind. As I know, this is kind of sensitive for a lot of people right now. People are upset that uh, anyone's covering this at all. I, I feel that that's quite interesting. We're going to get that to that later, but uh, let's just start. Let's just start the show. I've been going on for much too long without actually giving you the meat, right? So let's start. Insomniac Games, the storied video game developer owned by PlayStation and are the creators of Ratchet & Clank, Resistance, and its biggest series of games to date. There are three Spider-Man games has suffered a massive leak slash breach of privacy. Before we get into details of the leak, let's get some background. Residia, a ransomware group, revealed on December 12th that they have breached the security of Insomniac and have a total of 1.67 terabytes of data. This data holds about 1.3 million files and contains many things from future games, the release scheduling, internal studio messages, and worst above all, employees personal information i saw things like employee password information i personally sorry i personally did not see this but i have heard that there's things like passport information most likely some sort of uh, social security data and some of the things i don't know the very specifics because frankly i did not want to look into what was leaked specifically on what specific data is, and i did not get full concrete details on what specifically employee information was leaked so all i understand is some passport which is horrible and then of course uh i'm sure some sort of social security numbers were out there etc etc i'm sure it gets worse too as you read on but uh, who knows how deep it gets as i know most people were just worried about the games in this specific scenario this group asked for 50 Bitcoin, which equates to around $2 million as payment for keeping everything off the web for everyone to see. And they had one week from the notice to send the payment. Of course, Insomniac and or Sony had one week to send the payment or this will be released everywhere, right? They, of course, did not send out any payment. So the information has been released and all of it has been featured in the usual spots to expect from. So IGN, Reddit, specifically gaming links and rumors on Reddit and all over Twitter slash X. But not everywhere. Many gaming outlets and personalities have taken to their respective soapboxes to say that this leak is abhorrent and malicious and should not be covered or discussed. To name a few, Video Games Chronicle and GameSpot have refused to cover anything from the leak. Video Games Chronicle being one that almost never features any leaks of any kind and uh, gaming personalities to kind of funny games mainly spotlighted greg miller specifically who's one of the uh, co-founders was featured in their announcement of their denial of coverage of this specific title we'll be getting into the specifics later on because they're kind of the focal point of this entire kind of uh, uh situation i guess you could call it uh, and they will not be covering it at their uh, daily game, uh, sorry, daily show called Kind of Funny Games Daily. And Nick Caldera, co-founder of Second Wind, has also voiced concerns on this leak and the coverage of the leaks overall. Gene Park, notable Washington Post gaming journalist who is regularly on Last Stand Media content, has voiced positives to covering the actual products and, of course, not covering the specifics of the doxings that happened. This has made a complex and unique leak to cover, and now you can see why this demanded a unique approach to this leak and information for myself. Now the dog and since she had to go use the bathroom. Now we're going to be talking about the news as the first part of this. Again, as a reminder, timestamps below. If you'd like to skip this again, we'll not be covering anything, but I will be saying games that are coming out in the near future as well as their projects and these things. Right. And I will be talking about the actual dichotomy of why I think I should cover this after the fact. 
as I think the information is utmost importance, and then my editorializing can wait, right? I named it The News, because I'm dramatic and I like that. First and foremost, let's talk about the actual leaks and what specifically has leaked. First up, Wolverine, obviously, since this is what will be the closest to release, this was the most uh, uh, information that came out of this entire leak. We have concept bar to gameplay footage featuring the opening moments of the game, presumably. Test footage, the main cast, a roadmap, and I could go on. There was a vertical slice there. There was was there uh full information on how the progression of the game will work uh er everything about that i won't be going specifics again into how the game works uh, i won't be going into really how much time it takes or anything like that I won't be getting to how the missions are, or how long they are I won't be going any anything like that. more of a broad point of what's interesting from what's coming out and not necessarily the details of each product specifically okay the roadmap is the first main point I want to hit on, as it doesn't spoil anything important to the actual game. The roadmap is a slide that shows the expected timeline of the release, which is 2026 for this game, assuming they hit every milestone they need to hit to make sure they hit that release date. They are still in major production of this game, if this slide is uh, still current, and will not hit alpha testing until around August of 2025. The schedule also mentions that this is a macro schedule, and this is a three-year project with a total of 173 uh, total active uh, employees working on this, with another studio assisting with development. Using the slide, we can guess that the game may ship around September of 2026. Now, there is much more to this game. If you want the full details, head over to either Gaming Leaks and Rumors, Reddit for all of it. You can head over to IGN. You can head over to... What are some other ones? I think a place called Game Bytes had something, I, I believe. There, there's a couple other places, but I think those are the two prominent places you can go to. Now, before we move on from this, I wanted to quickly discuss a couple things. Uh, one, we get news that it could hit around September 2026. Now, I do have conflicting information later on that could mean that it comes out 2025, as long as I'm reading everything correctly. So, obviously, everything in the slides we're not meant to see it right so it's not going to make sense and it's and as far as i understand the, a lot of the files were dated but as but i did not access the raw files i don't have an interest in doing that be honest with anyone here and i don't want to purse through everything so this is me secondhand information from a lot of others it's going off the guesswork so i know the actual files i believe have have uh data creation data linked to it but i do not know which one came first i imagine the one who envisions the game coming later is more up to date as uh, it's rare that you're able to push it forward, especially in video games, uh, let alone in any other project. That, I think, is everything I want to cover uh, specifically from Wolverine. We'll be coming back to this with uh, the greater roadmap that Insomniac Games has. Uh, next up, we have the Venom game. Yes, this is kind of the big shock of all of this a venom game will be coming don't think this is really a shock if you played spider-man 2 um i guess sort of spoilers for spider-man 2 that i should have put at the beginning of this uh kind of not really but there you go the side highlight the slide highlights are this game will be a bridge between spider-man 2 and just like miles morales uh, sorry uh, let me let me back up this game will be a bridge between spider-man 2 and 3 just like Spider-Man Miles Morales was for 1 and 2. Venom will be playable along with others. The game will be of a similar length to Miles Morales. So it looks like instead of getting a Miles Morales type game, we'll be getting this Venom game at some point in between. There. Again, not shocking if you played the game. Uh, I said, <laughs> again, light spoilers for the game. I said in the spoiler class that I imagined that this was going to happen. Uh, it, you can easily uh, write away specific problems that could happen uh, from making this game. And there you go. You, you have a game like this, right? So there you go. That's pretty much all I wanted to cover on that. Again, there's much more out there of this, but I will not be covering that specifically here because I'm not trying to ruin the game. I'm just trying to give uh, information about the game. Ratchet & Clank is the next in a game that is expected sometime around 2029, has only some very concept art explaining the main ideas of the game, what the game may follow in terms of themes. Again, gaming is uh, 
is like a ocean. It flows. It moves back and forth, right? Th this could not happen. This could happen. All of this could be real. All of this could be change of plans from a few years ago. So there's a couple of things that may be true out of everything I'll be covering. There could be things that are incorrect. But right now, as of what we saw from all of these documents, this is up to date so far. Ratchet and Clank expected around some sort of 2029 date. Who knows if that's actually going to happen. I think there's a chart later that might say that wasn't there. I can't quite remember, but we'll see. There also seems to have been a canceled game called Spider-Man The Great Web, which would have been using, uh, which using their own words in the leaked slide for this, uh, said it was going to be a triple A multiplayer open world action adventure. Don't know the specifics of that game there wasn't really much there's a couple of slides that you can kind of piece together i remember seeing a picture of a uh, of spider people and they had like stats in these things um there was going to be like raids and, and all these things so they were going to try and make a multiplayer online not they didn't say mmo so it, more of a destiny casual mmo uh sort of thing for consoles maybe not demand your time or anything like that seems that this was going to be another games as a service title uh that didn't work out for playstation that they probably planned on and had in works with the jim ryan era but it is canceled now multiplayer is not done we'll be covering what they're going to be doing with multiplayer in a little bit and we'll see if any of that actually comes to fruition there was a roadmap in the link that contradicts a previous finding that I mentioned earlier. Coming out at around uh, Wolverine, sorry. There was a map, there's a roadmap in the leak that contradicts a previous finding of Wolverine. We mentioned this earlier. Coming out around 2026 and has a large roadmap uh, spanning from 2020 to 2020, uh, 2032. Or no, sorry, 2035, I believe. This was Spider-Man Remastered and Miles Morales, Ratchet and Clank, Rift Apart, and Spider-Man 2, all where they're supposed to be in terms of release date. But Wolverine is in 2025 at the end of the year. Spider-Man 3 is in fall of 2027. X-Men, which is a game we haven't talked about yet, uh, will be uh, a featured X-Men game, will be of 2029. A new IP will be featured in 2031, maybe summer. X-Men with a three in the corner of the title, which should read as X-Men to the third power. So uh, who knows what this actually means in terms of what the leak could be. It, it was interesting. It's literally the X-Men title, classic kind of like 90s blue, blue and yellow. And it has X-Men to the third power is how you should read it. Uh, there wasn't a second X-Men in any of this, so I'm assuming it is some sort of internal name. Uh, internal way of saying the name. It could be just a code name or something like that. Uh, there could be a second X-Men game being made somewhere else that we don't know about. I, I mean, really, this is, this is, again, information we're not meant to see. We're not meant to know context for. So who knows what that actually could mean for uh, the actual game itself. I have not seen. If you have seen something, let me know. I'll pin it in the comments of this video. And I'll have it on the uh, actual pin section of the comments if anyone has any relevant interest in certain these things um again keep it spoilery i don't think you can mark things as spoiler text in youtube so i actually might not pin stuff just so no one has to read uh anything that's spoilery i did not think about that i don't think you can do that so i might not do that now uh but let me know if you think or any of this or any new information has come to light and i'll try and have a corrections maybe in the description or something to try and keep this as spoilery as i guess you want it i don't know i'm trying trying to help everyone out out there uh there will also be a um uh oh and that was could be early fall by the way that x-men to the third power in 2023 and then a new ip fall 2035 somewhere around there who knows who knows really it was a really big um kind of roadmap like like i mentioned uh sp sprawling through all that and again any of that could change like uh, uh like i said ratchet and clank was not mentioned in that specific one so I, who knows what that means only rift apart was there maybe that ratchet and clank game isn't happening maybe that's really old i don't know but there you go could be the one of the new ips 
it's not technically a new IP, but maybe that 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 Ratchet and Clank game replaced the um 2031 thing. Maybe the X Men game replaced that. I don't know, but there it is. Now online had its own section of slides. Uh, the section had Spider Man Two online coming sometime in 2024, uh, maybe summer, leading into a Wolverine game, Wolverine Online, sometime in mid 2026, and an X Men Online sometime in 2028. So there seemed to have been like a strategy, and we'll get to the, get to something here in a second that talks about uh, how like the multiple of these things work. And again, none of this could be real. Or, sorry, none of this could still be in effect. This is all real. It's just arguing on if this could still be in the plans. Who knows? And maybe Insomniac will talk something about this. It's all, it's the holiday season. I imagine we don't hear from them until early June, January uh, because they most likely, m- most of them are probably already out for the year. Or at least into Christmas time, and then maybe they'll be back for a little bit before New Year's. Who knows? No idea uh, how they work there. But it will be mentioning that they have seemed to be very interested in in bringing online components, specifically after the game has launched. Maybe they saw some sort of info in how Ghost of Tsushima did their online, that they got like maybe a spike and PlayStation shared that data, and now that inspired other people to do it. Maybe they've completely abandoned all of this, and this is old info. Who knows? Maybe they, they're still doing some of this, but not all of it. Obviously, you have to ask yourself, how does a Wolverine online work? Assumably, you're only playing as Wolverine. Maybe you play as a Wolverine friend like Sabretooth, or maybe an X-Men character shows up or something. I, who knows? We're, this is all guesswork. Again, I did not read story stuff. I did not read any of the plot details. I didn't look at any of the gameplay, right? So I'm not hinting or trying to pretend like I know anything. You're just, I guess, going to take my word on that, but I am not. I'm just kind of guessing what, what would a Wolverine online game be. I have no idea doesn't really make sense if you kind of think about it. Spider-Man 2 Online, of course, the, the advertisement, everyone actually thought it might be a multiplayer game when they first showed it to us. We all thought they'd be co-op. Maybe multiplayer just means co-op. Maybe multiplayer just means a separate mode where you have a mission and you go do it and it's very linear, similar to as, a, as, as I imagine Ghost of Tsushima was. If I remember right, I never played it, but you, you started a, uh, you started like a thing and played that with people. I don't think it was like open world, but I'm, I'm not sure as again, I never played it. So we'll have to see how all this works. Again, they are very interested in incorporating online after the game is launches, probably to get boosts of sales up and down, you know, and we can see that kind of here um, in the Spider-Man 2 content strategy that uh, we have here. So this is how DLC and these things will be coming out, right? This is expected dates. Again, I want to be clear here. Uh, I will try and stay away from any spoilers. Or, sorry. I, I I will be spoiling Spider-Man 2 right now. In the aspect of there will be uh, a specific character mention that, that spoils a specific side quest, kind of. All right? Not a major spoiler, but just know that I will be saying some things that might mess a few things up okay uh if you have not played it yet so again t- I, I will try to be as good as i can with timestamps below while also trying to not spoil things in the timestamps this is going to be a very hard episode to work with so i apologize for that hopefully uh you understand so the digital deluxe edition with the regular spider-man 2 comes out it has it featured 2023 between q2 and q3 um That should be correct with how they do fiscal years. I don't remember. The first Spider-Man 2 DLC, there will be an open world mission, a boss fight, and it will be called Beetle Infestation. I actually don't know what this is. I don't, off the top of my head, remember a Marvel character with this information, but there you go. The second DLC is where it gets a bit spoilery. It will be uh, another open world mission, a boss fight, and then it will be Extreme Carnage. That That is what it is called. And then the third one will assumably work, and it even says in a bullet point here, will work in with Spider-Verse, specifically the movie. There will be a DLC around that. Uh, there will be a mission, and it will be a Sony Pictures tie-in. And then to cap it all off, 
uh, there will be a Game of the Year edition that comes out Q3 of 2024, a little bit after that third DLC. And to backtrack, Beetle Infestation's Q1 2024, so assumably May? I, I don't remember how their fiscal years work, but I think that would be like March to May time for them. And then we're going to then Q... Yeah, for sorry, for Carnage is Q1. Q4 of 2023 would be that Beetle Infestation, so sometime in the early of next year, maybe. You can see that. Who knows? Uh, and then the Spider-Verse is Q3 of 2024 with Game of the Year shortly after that uh, in that same fiscal year. Uh, sorry, that fiscal quarter of fiscal year 2024. <sighs> Big mouthful, but that is the timeline or at least the expected timeline of Spider-Man 2 and how their DLCs and all these things will work. Okay. Now. Let's talk about Spider-Man 3 and how there will assumably be like a two-part thing, if this is being read correctly. There is like an entire chart on how this will maximize money and profits and all these things, right? Now, this is something unique as Insomniac may take something out of the movie industry and split up their, presumably, final installment in their Spider-Man series with Spider-Man 3 making it into two parts. Now, I will describe the first part to you. So, Spider-Man 3 is... Uh, written out in like kind of like a combo section and then the first spider-man is spider-man 3 single just a single title it's x'd out because they're like you know we're not going to do this because this other way is better and we have data to show this x thing will happen and this happen right so originally it was going to be holiday of 2027 you have fully spider-man 3 it will sell a lifetime of 12, 15 million units it will come out at a launch price of 69.99 and they will net around $7 million to $720 million. Dev costs will be about $300 million. The net contribution will be around $160 to $180 million. And their ROI, which is return on um, investment, around 50%, right? Now, if we talk about what their plan is now, so... Instead of doing that, they do a part one of Spider-Man 3 that launches same time, holiday 2027. They sell the around the same units of 12 million. They go to a 49.99 model and hit around 405 million to 415 million. And they have like a number next to it of, of saying like 550 million. That could be like the what they want to hit, maybe. And then they have the dev cost being around 105 million, so it'd be uh, a little bit cheaper to do that. And the net contribution being about 80 to 90 million. And their return on ROI would be uh, 41%, which is very interesting. So, so they're fully expecting to sell slightly less, make it cost less, but be able to sell you the part two the very next year, as as this next part of the slide says, part two next year, holiday 2028. 12 million units, so they expect to sell the exact same amount of units of the first part, which, okay, it could make sense. Same exact price of $49.99. So instead of selling you a $70 game, they're going to sell you a $100 game spaced out between between a year. Again, if all of this is still true, by the time this all happens, who knows? It will net their sales between about four oh five to four hundred and fifteen million. Dev cost will be two twenty five million. So the dev cost will actually be uh more this way, right? The total cost being three hundred and what three hundred and four hundred million dollars, right? Yeah, yeah, four hundred million dollars total. So more than the three hundred, a hundred million dollars more, but they could get more on return. And we're not uh, even done with how much the dev cost would be. The net contribution being around $40 million, the return is 16%. So it's so smaller return because uh, it's going to take them, assumably, a lot more to make part two. I imagine they already know why. I don't know why, but they probably know. Maybe part two is a bigger experience or they're able to make more of it since they have technically more time to do with it. So it's going to take cost them a lot more money. Now, we have a third section of the slide, but it's important to, to know this. So this is actually the multiplayer plan. This will launch day and date with part one. Okay, so that same holiday 2027 time frame, it will be multiplayer. Now, I'm curious on how they will sell. So it says lifetime units of 3 million. 
So that's interesting. I don't know. It says it will add on to the sale and it will be it'll be forty nine ninety nine. So I'm curious. Maybe they're saying like an additional three million people will buy it just because there's multiplayer on it. I'm a little confused on that. Be honest. The dev cost will be around 80 million for the multiplayer um, suite on this game. The contribution of this will be around eight to nine million. And then their ROI will be about 10 percent. On this, so. If they do all of this, that adds a little bit more of the uh, multiplayer costs onto the dev team. And now we go into what they expect. So now that when all this is done, part one and two are out, they do a combo of everything. So part one and two and the multiplayer assumably um, in 2029, they sell around two million units of the re-release that costs 60 bucks, right? That will cost uh, or sorry, their net sales expect to be around 100 million. And their dev cost will be nothing because the game's done and they're just putting it together. Uh, their net contribution will be around 60 million to 65 million. And their return on Iowa will be greater than 100 percent. And remember, their ROI on the original single title would be 50 percent. And if they piece it out this way, they're guaranteed to have a much bigger return on how they invest into the title. And their total for everything and their calculations on this slide, they, they will sell a lifetime units of $29 million on just one title, part out into two. So part one and two. They will have a net sale of $1.1 billion. Very, very much a lot of money. And their dev costs will be around $480 million. So that's $180 million more than what it costs to make a single do uh, a single Spider-Man 3. But they're saying that's a much bigger return on investments if we're able to parse it out like this. And then the net contribution would be that $188 million to $209 million, which I believe is how much you have to play Marvel to, to even do all of this in the first place, uh, which is wild. Uh, and then uh, the return on investment is uh, like 30% more or something like that. Is 30, yeah, 30%. Yes, sorry. That's confused. That confused me for a second. But my God. I love I love seeing these kind of deep dives into what they're thinking and how they're uh approaching how to make more money in, in a time span where people are complaining about paying $70 for a thing, and we might very much be in the time span of who paying $80 for something. Right. And people are already flabbergasted when they have to pay 70 bucks when a game comes out and they're looking at it. Well, let's not make them spend 70. We'll make them pay 50. Do it. Do it twice in the span of a year. And it just doesn't feel as bad to them uh, instead of making it a, an $80 game or however much they would need to reach the same sales goal. I th and I, th I frankly think it's interesting and if they don't want to raise the price it's probably the best way to do it I actually don't like the idea of it being cut up into, into parts uh, I just would rather just have one complete game and pay a little extra for it but that is the world we live in I guess uh, they see a way of making more money so they're going to do it uh, interested in seeing what people think about that now with all these Insomniac leaks there were actually some Sony information in there and there had an actual internal document that kind of describes how the landscape of xbox buying activision blizzard will change things now we're getting a little off course here in the middle of this so i'm actually gonna save this yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna save this actually uh because i don't want to get too far out of the bend because we can have sony all together on one thing so i apologize for for kind of sweeping you there. We're going to skip this, come back to it. We're going to talk about some key financial measures and what they're going to be talking about with specific regards to the Venom game and what it will be of Miles Morales. They're going to compare the two and they're going to see how it's going to work over the lifetime. I think it's very interesting here because although they don't expect it to surpass it in its uh, first year, they ultimately think it will, I believe, compete overall. And this is lifetime uh, for Miles Morales versus Venom coming out uh, the one time. Even and and they also say, oh, no. So actually, 
I, I was wrong. Let me let me read everything and stop talking. So they have uh, two columns, Venom and Miles Morales, as of June 2023. That's how the two columns work. And they have each of their uh, brackets and uh, uh, what they would be called the, the financial measure. It's all written out, right? So they have a launch date, a launch price point, first 12 months units, their lifetime units, net sales in the first 12 months, their total net sales, the Marvel licensing fee, the profit share, uh, something called COGS. What is COGS? Oh my God, what is COGS? Do not remember. Give me one second to look up. It's of COGS in finance. Cost of goods sold. I knew I heard that somewhere. I'm pretty sure it was in my old economics class in like high school or something like that. So cost of goods sold includes all of the costs and expenses directly related to the production of goods. That makes sense. So that's just an, a condensed way of like, this is the cost of goods sold. There you go. I'm sure people at home are screaming like, what? cogs, are you serious? That's uh, one of the most simplest things in all of economics. I apologize for that. Uh, Marvel licensee, profit share, marketing, market, uh, development costs to launch, development costs post-launch, uh, title profit, um, and then return on investments, and ROS, which is return on what? ROS in finance. Sorry about this, folks. I just I want to make sure I'm correct on there. Uh, return on sales. Duh. Jesus. I'm off, I'm off it today. Let me get a sip. Let me get a sip of water. Let me get a sip of water. Been a lot of talking already, so I apologize. Uh, that that should that should kind of get me get me going again. And there will also be like break even units at f average price and full price and etc cetera, etc. Cetera. So let's get into it. So for Venom, the launch date is expected to be holiday twenty twenty five. Miles Morales would be uh, would have been November of twenty twenty. We already know that, of course. The launch price point would be um forty nine ninety nine. And those and they're both priced the exact same with the WSP, the, the exact same as well, uh, which is wholesale price, by the way. Excuse me. Uh, first 12 months uh, units sold for Venom is expected to be 7 million. Miles Morales, 8.5 million. So already that first year is already less than what they expected. Now, I want to remind everyone that this is on a launch unit, right? Miles Morales was a launch game. Uh, on it came out November 2020, came out the same day as the uh, PS5, so that would boost the sales. So in my opinion, it's already pretty impressive that Venom could hit that same window in a 2025 metric. Now we could technically be, if they're hitting Holiday 25, that could be a PS5 Pro game. In theory, if everything washes out with that correctly, that could be a PS5 Pro game. Who knows? Who knows? But that could argue why they expect to nearly match Miles Morales in their entire uh, lifespan in that first 12 months to nearly match it, which is, again, that, that new system, that, that's, that was already a hot commodity because, you know, you want something new that's going to be that's going to be higher because, one, it was cheaper than a normal game, and two, it's right there next to the counter when you're picking up the system for, you know, you know, your kids, your, your significant other or for yourself. It's just like the easiest thing to buy. I mean, it's, it's it has Spider-Man on the title, you know, so it's going to be boosted. So it is interesting that they they see it coming anywhere close to the title. And so that's the first 12 minutes. Lifetime units for both things will be $10 million for Venom, $14.4 million for Miles Morales. The net sales of the first 12 months will be $285 million for Venom. And the first 12 months for Miles Morales was $302 million. Uh, and their net sales total after that lifetime units, $361.7 million for Venom, $554 million for Miles Morales. Uh, and then the cost of goods sold for Venom um, would be $29.4 million. Miles Morales would be $28.9 million. Marvel's licensing fees, so for Venom, it'll be $57.3 million. Miles Morales, it was $106.5 million. That is pretty crazy. Pretty, pretty, pretty crazy. That licensing fee, man. Just just to use the guy, you're you're losing 106 million of your money. Whew. 
Profit share would be around 16 million for Venom, and Miles Morales would be 42 million. It's like nothing uh, for the profit share, but yeah, there you go. Marketing, 25 million for Venom, 25.1 million for Miles Morales. So just around the same marketing, which uh, Miles, if I remember, I had pretty big marketing kind of thing. I'm surprised, honestly, it costs that much, but there you go. Development cons to launch Venom much more at 120 million, and Miles Morales was much less, 81.7 million. I'm imagining because they're going to have to make a whole new character in Venom, which he probably won't share much of the moveset of either peter or miles whereas miles he was very unique in a lot of ways but in a lot of ways he was just you know peter with with a slightly different kind of asset works and of course he had unique moves and these things but i'm sure that made it cheaper to make because uh one it was the exact same uh map they just had to you know they changed it a lot in in many ways but it was the same map and Miles uh, could still be worked sort of in how Peter Parker maybe moved in these things. I'm, assu I'm assuming that's how they were able to make it slightly cheaper. Title profit will be a total of $114 million for Venom and $269.8 million for Miles Morales. Uh, return on sales, 32% for Venom, 47% for Miles Morales. And the return on interest will be 79% for Venom. And 242% for Miles Brown. It's just it's crazy. It's crazy. Crazy how big Miles Brown will be. We'll have to see if, if if Venom keeps track with the lifetime units. I will be shocked if they only hit that 10 million. But I mean, hey, that could happen. Again, they had that PS5 boost. So it's hard to uh, rationalize hitting that again, right? Their break even units, this is what they need to break even, would be 5.3 million sold at average price. So their average of pricing would probably be around like 35 bucks, probably something like that. And uh, for Miles Morales, it was 3.7 million units. And at full price, it would be 4.1 million for Venom. And Miles Morales would be 2.6 million. So I feel like this is all pretty reasonable in terms of sales. I'm not going to pretend like I'm an economist or anything like that. I'm still kind of new to really learning a lot about uh, uh, units and solds and, and what is good and all these things and to me this seems like even venom hitting all these metrics it seems somewhat conservative from their point of view or at least from my point of view i guess um, i feel like it will it will sell a little bit more units than these but again you have to remember that miles sold at the same time as a system that's already going to make it sell more in these things i was it bundled i remember spider-man remaster being bundled but like was miles with it i think it was i can't really remember I, I want to say there was like a bundle with it, so that might have boosted as well. Um, but there you go. I, I I thought this was quite quite interesting because we really get to peek into how they see uh, how a title will react in the market. And this is kind of the first time we've ever really seen something like this, right? I can't think of another time we've ever seen anything like this. Some random financials I found. Pardon me, I, I, I apologize for that. Some random financials I found. Spider-Man 2 had a $315 million budget. Insane. Makes sense, though, because Spider-Man 2, you're going to make that money back, right? I'm curious on how much it's going to make um, in Lifetime. Uh, around 24 days on the market, Spider-Man 2 sold 6.1 million units, which is... Oh, my God. Hold on. Let's get a calculator out, everyone. Let's calculator, right? So Spider-Man 2 was a $70 game, right? So 6.1. Wait, why did I do that? 6. Let's get that to a million. Sorry. 6. There you go. So, so it sold 6.1 million units, right? So And it times 70 bucks. That would get you $427 million. So they made their money back in 24 days on the market. So on that first 24 days, they sold 6.1 million units. So they made the budget if, as long as they stayed on budget, which I assume they did. Uh, $350 million is a lot of money. Now, it says the budget. I found that randomly on a game. I found that specific thing. I rem If I remember right, that was a Game and Leaks rumor 
read it, but I couldn't find the original slide for that. So if that's including everything with marketing in these things, which I know sometimes it does, sometimes it does not. Generally, the marketing will be about anywhere between some some. I mean, I remember the days where it'd be like a, you do a third of your budget in marketing or whatever. So that's probably included in this. And it was probably and I think the dev, the dev costs are probably. So I think I do. I don't I have dev costs somewhere. I thought I did for something. I mean, we could go off Spider-Man 3's dev cost of if it was a single title being that three hundred million dollars. So that's just the dev cost. That's not including the cost of uh, marketing and all these things. So you can assume that that if they did not make their money back in that first 24 days, that they got very close. So they're already working with extra money probably by this point and by Christmas time, we're already getting metrics that that Black Friday was huge for PlayStation outselling their competitor Xbox by I think it was like three to one, which is just embarrassing. So if they sold that much and imagine how many Spider-Man 2 sold, I mean, I, I literally would not be surprised if, if they doubled their, their sales nearly or something like that, like something insane. Like, like there's so many PS5s on the market including like ones that you're buying new and buying a Spider-Man 2 with it because that's like what it what what the person you're buying it for wants or yourself wants plus people already having it on their Christmas like it's just it's so many so I'll be curious if it I mean it could nearly double I, I mean the Spider-Man 2 is like crazy so I think it's the best-selling Sony exclusive ever right so Spider-Man 1 was so I imagine this will overtake it easily some random information such that overdrive hasn't gotten any ports or sequels because microsoft has actual sequel rights for up to two sequels and ports that have to go on the microsoft console as well so if they port sunset overdrive on the playstation it will have to go to microsoft as well so that's why it's not going to happen or probably never will happen as long as nothing radically changes and also the sequels the two sequels um will also have to be on microsoft so if there was ever a two and three they could not be exclusive, so that will also never happen. PlayStation is not in the uh, is not in for sharing money. They would rather just make something new and get all of the money versus sharing the money with someone else. I'm pretty sure that's everything for Insomniac. We're going to be moving on to uh, the Sony thing I wanted to talk about in how the leak was affected with them and what we can discuss from uh, everything that happened. Uh, with a couple of slides that came out again. Again, as a reminder, this is not everything. I'm not pretending that I had everything. I'm not pretending like this is everything. If you want to find every little nook and cranny of this entire leak, there's plenty of places to find it. It was very easy to find as well. So, uh, the title of this is called Industry Shift the Leapfrog. Microsoft act acquisitions of Activision positions it to leapfrog our current pillars. Activision provides incredible strategic value across live service games, scale in mobile and PC front, bat uh, in parentheses, Battle.net. In addition, Microsoft is building a mobile gaming store to compete with Apple and Google. And then the next slide is called Industry Major Shifts and Threats. The Call of Duty Threat in 2027. Microsoft's acquisition of Activision for $69 billion could disrupt and threaten console gaming and game subscription markets. Console, shift from PlayStation to Xbox with timing and in-game differential as the weapons. Subscription, Microsoft's comprehensive ecosystem coupled with exclusives creates greater dominance. Sony Impact. This is the next bullet. Sorry, I've been, I've been reading bullets, by the way. Bullet, uh, next bullet. Massive threat, Sony impact, massive threat to PlayStation Plus, upwards of 1.5 billion of annual revenue threat. That's the annual revenue, by the way, they make off PS Plus by doing almost nothing. They just, that's not fair. Not almost nothing. Just having a couple games like, you know, new every month and then supplying you with servers and online online and then having like the streaming services working. So like, it's just an annual avenue revenue of 1.5 billion, which is, you know, very good to good, very easy money to have it keep going as long as you keep the service going right um it, uh 45 million subs times the 12 dollar monthly times 12 months times 20 percent multiplayer third party right so that's their like actual threat to the playstation plus dominance right day and date threat post acquisition of microsoft will put activision games on game pads day and date not saying that playstation will not get it they seem to know for the fact 
that they will be getting all that the title still, but that it would also be put on a uh, game, game pass day and date. And that would be hard for a consumer to not justify just buying it or just going to Xbox for that. Right. Next bullet is Leapfrog. Activision provides incredible strategic value across live service games, scale in mobile and PC storefront. Uh, Microsoft can supply multi-game subscriptions, 50%. Console games, 50%. PC, 60%. Right. Sony pillars are already dated and behind the competition. Sony's impact need to expand. Elusive perfect game subscription. That's this. I think this is probably the most eye-opening out of all these slides. Premium content is one bulletin. Expectation of free best-in-class games creates unsustainable model. Monthly and incremental subs won't cover investment. Next bullet. Unifying mobile PC console experience doesn't exist. Form factor and computer power are too diverse. Next bullet. Sony Impact. Premium sales model is the central approach. It's very, very interesting here. So each thing has the Sony impact, right? And they see it as the elusive perfect game subscription as being unsustainable. It's just not happening. That's why they, that their, their premium sales model will be their central approach, which you have to argue they have no reason to buckling off of because it is working. Why move from that? And it seems like they kind of are moving from it. If you incorporate these, uh, all these online games that they're trying to work and, and now they seemingly are trying to abandon with some of these games with, of course, uh, news of last of us online being canceled and all these things. But it seems to be their uh, current planning. Steer course. Keep it going. Keep doing what they do best. Premium games. Knowing premium uh, a premium service with best-in-class games creates an unsustainable one, but I have to agree with them. I really... I This is something that I've actually come to terms with in probably the last year to two years. I'm going to read that again. One bulletin. Premium content. Expectation of free. Right? Best in class games creates unstable model. Now I know everyone's saying like, well, it's not free. You pay for game pass, but that is the expectation of it being free, right? You're not paying the premium dollar for the experience, right? You're not paying for that big fat $300 million Spider-Man two on your, on your system. You're paying for the couple million dollar Pentiment and your one off random, what? $300 million Starfield, probably more than that. 350 million. Probably even more than that. Who knows? But as a premium subscription model, it's just hard to believe that they will be able to sustain this if it was not a Microsoft, right? If this was anyone else, some startups, it just wouldn't happen. That it has you have to have a Microsoft here to be able to even start a business like this, let alone make money off of it. It is said time and time again, they are not making money, right? It is not something that makes them money. They are in the black. For most of part, or sorry, they're not in the black, they're in the red. Being in the black would be good. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Uh, they're, as far as uh, most people understand, they're in the red, and they're not really uh, hitting profits yet, and that's really not the idea. They're, I don't believe they really care about making profits yet. They probably care in like 10 years. If you remember, we had that big Xbox leak from the... FTC hearing that that someone like accidentally uh, opened up and we could see literally everything that they had planned. And, and one of them was by, by like 2030, they double their subscription. If I remember right, I get hopefully I'm remembering that right uh, to to maintain Game Pass existence. Pretty much. It seemed like it, it seemed like a do or, or die model almost. And that just seems like that. You know, it's hard to believe. It's hard to believe if that actually does happen. So. Uh, because I believe it was 50 million by 2030, which Activision Blizzard helps with that. But now you're 69 billion dollars in the hole. And uh, what's the one argument? I, I believe this was Hoag's Law for a great you, uh, YouTube channel, by the way. Um, he said um, it was in reference of uh, no, 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 no. It's Gary Witta. Sorry about that. It's Gary Witta, I believe, that said this where. Um, when they talked about Force Awakens, I think he said something about like when you hear when you hear news about well, Force Awakens, like oh, you know the the movie costs like you know three hundred million dollars to make or something like that. He was like, well, it actually costs a billion dollars because uh, we're trying to make our money back from buying Star Wars in the first place or whatever. You know, I'm butchering it, but it, it, that idea where it's like 
the next Call of Duty, you know, it's it's it, they want to make money on it, but it's 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 going to be sixty nine billion dollars of a total making money back, plus keeping everything alive and all these things. And of course, it's Microsoft. They don't they don't give a shit about this money. I mean, really, at the end of the day, like burning it might be the best value right now. They might not want to sit on the money. Who knows? Uh, so getting rid of it is might be the best avenue for them. Who know? I don't know how a uh, major economics like that works, but being able to pick up Activision Blizzards, like they said, was a leapfrog moment and will leapfrog them somewhere. We'll just have to see where that is. Next up in the Sony thing, we have just some random sale th sold throughs. So this is um, actual sale sales numbers for a lot of these games. And um, I'm just going to pick out a couple interesting ones. Uh, uh, physical year of 2020, Last of Us Part Two sold at 9.6 million units. Um, you know what? I actually might skip this because we're actually going a bit long. And off the top of my head, I don't see anything particularly interesting in this pre-fiscal year. Um, Spider-Man 2018 sold 22 million units. I'm, I'm pretty sure we knew that, but it's still crazy, crazy, insane to to read that. A lot of this is interesting, but I, 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 God of War 3 remastered sold 5.57 million. That's a lot more for like a remaster than I thought it'd be. Little Big Planet 3 sold 5.3. Uncharted Lost Legacy 5.2. This is all pre fiscal year of 2020. Death Stranding only sold 4.1 million units. That's not a lot. But that game might not have made, uh, have, have not cost a lot of. Oh my God. I'm butchering this. I'm so sorry. The game might not have cost that much to make, so that could be okay. Who knows? Uh, it didn't feel like a very expensive game to make because a lot of it's just mountains. So it could be could have been cheap. Now, that's pretty much everything I wanted to cover in the leagues. We covered the Insomniac Games leagues with things to come and all and everything else. We covered PlayStation and a couple of other things that came out. And, and you know, I, this is tired, but... Uh, I did not cover everything. I have no interest in covering everything because it, I would just be spoiling the games for you here. I'm not interested in doing that. I'm also not interested in doing that myself, frankly. So I just wanted to point that out yet again, that if you do want to uh, send more, go check it out. Please do not put it in the comments or anything like that. Let's respect each other. I don't want anyone spoiled more than they wanted to from watching the vid. Uh, again, I'll try to make timestamps as easy to navigate as possible. If you want to just hear the discourse, you just want to hear about the game, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now, let's get into part two. Okay, part two. A little bit of discourse. Again, I'm fan. I'm fanciful. I gotta, I gotta name things. Feel like I'm smart when I do things like that. And of course, part two. Is not to the number II, of course, Roman numerals. Because, you know, you feel a little smarter when you do a Roman numeral. Let's be honest with ourselves. Now, this was almost as interesting as the leaks themselves, as the gaming industry seemed to completely 180, sort of, on leaks as many in the games industry spoke out, and many even scolded others for even uh, covering the details of leaks, like I have in the previous section. Many from news outlets like GameSpot's Tamer Hussein spoke that GameSpot will not cover the leak at all, even though GameSpot is a gaming news outlet. Andy Robinson, editor-in-chief at Video Games Chronicle, uh, had similar thoughts, and I'm going to actually uh, read throughout the Twitter threads and give their full throats, uh, sorry, their full quotes, because I feel like that's uh, fair than me just kind of half-passing what they said. We're actually going to read their full thread. So this is Andy Robinson, uh, his Twitter thread on the uh, leak. And again, he's going to say it's not a leak. It's a information in a breach, bre uh, in a breach. I understand. I say leak as just easier. I, I, maybe I should, instead of uh, said leak, I, I should say breach every time or something like that. But here we go. Andy Robinson says, quote, it should go without saying, but VGC won't be reporting specifically on any of the stolen assets in the Insomniac hack. This isn't a uh, leak and pe um, people's personal information is included in the breach. Feel for Insomniac today. For those asking, VGC didn't cover content from the Capcom hack for the same reason. There's damaging personal info there or here. 
and I don't want to amplify it for the sake of outing some future games. There's a clear difference between this and other leaks and covering ramifications versus content. That's my decision. Excuse me, I'm sorry. That's my decision, and it's easy for me. We're independent and can forego traffic. Others can make their own calls on the value of coverage. I empathize. This isn't an easy call for some, and since I posted earlier, it's clear that it's genuine info worth covering beyond X game exists. VGC's data is absolutely to our readers. Is VGC's duty. I'm so sorry. Let me just back that up. VGC's duty is absolutely to our readers and we have clear standards but that doesn't mean we don't have empathy for who we cover the games media biz is also intrinsically tied to the ups and downs of the games industry so the screw them argument doesn't really work for me i don't think anyone who's read vgc can accuse us of holding back the secrecy in games is ridiculous and 99 percent of the time if it's in the public domain and has journalistic value, we publish it. Some of our early leak reporting I wouldn't do now, but that's just growth. Growth. I do note that earlier this month, the Game Awards was rightly, widely criticized by many outlets for not championing industry issues. I think it's good there's debate around how we should cover these damaging leaks to our audiences of millions. It's funny, he even says leaks there. Um, so that's one. This one person. Let's move on to um, another person who is very vocal. Uh, uh, and, and also, um, I did mention Tamar Hussein. I did not have his tweet up. Uh, his was very short. He just mentioned he uh, they won't be covering it. They feel for Insomniac and these things. I didn't feel like it was worth uh, quoting only because it wasn't very lengthy. It was just a very simple, we are not covering on GameSpot pretty much. That was Andy Robinson. Uh, next up, we have Greg Miller, co-founder of Kind of Funny, whom also seems to be more and more somewhat of a spokesperson for the gaming industry, had an entire segment of his show, Kind of Funny Games Daily, dedicated to why they won't say any of the specifics of the leaks and will only talk about the human component of how the leak of the information will uh, be of effect to Insomniac Games moving forward. He says, uh, quote, uh, in, with a, uh, a minute and 28 second uh what would you call this intro for the usual show kind of funny games daily that goes day, uh, every day talking about gaming news he starts with this insomnia leak is an invasion of privacy done on a massive scale that's why today we will not be reporting on the details of the leak instead we'll discuss how this affects the people working on your favorite games he goes on to mention in the 128 that he feels if he's not going to talk about the leaks he feels bad for insomniac etc cetera, etc cetera, right we're going to talk about uh what that means for that specifics but i want to get through everyone and then we can kind of piece through who we want to talk about in these things nick caldera uh someone i know uh or not new but i interviewed on this very show and he's very nice to me uh former editor-in-chief at escape is now co-founder of second win was very against reporting the statistics of the leaks stating uh, quote, people really need to understand the journalist's role in covering the insomniac data breach. The ransom ask and the breach, including notifying that personal details have been publicized from that breach, endangering pers people's personal info. The content of the breach? No. Are the contents of that breach newsworthy? Yes, but they are not essential public information and were stolen. Not leaked, not sent out from a source, they were stolen. Used as blackmail for a ransom. And now we're being auctioned off for money by criminals. So all the people making claims that it's journalists' job to cover that info are wrong. The data breach and blackmail are the story. If you're covering the contents of that breach as the story, then you're ethically in the wrong and the people are right to be angry with you. Not much can be done once that info is out in the wild. That's the nature of the internet. But as a journalist, if you're reporting on stolen information as news, reporting it as a leak is factually incorrect can make your own choice to cover it, but it's not a leak. There are many replies. He, he spends some time talking with people in these things. He has many, many, many replies on his Twitter account. If you'd like to uh, go check out all of his things, uh, there's so many. I won't go into every single detail of his. Um, I'm going to read a few that I think are um, interesting and I would think uh, would feel left out of me quoting him if I didn't mention it. So... Here's another one quote for the record. I've been against covering gaming links that involve the information being stolen for years now. Don't care what studio, publisher, etc. 
Something getting published early or publicly accessible info, like a concept art, LinkedIn listing, etc. Fair game. Nothing to do with bowing to marketing or hype cycles either. I'm just more concerned about my long-term rapport with sources and developers than I am getting a big traffic hit for a day. Took that stance after laughing at Kotaku years ago for trying to proclaim their leaking of Ubisoft and Bethesda titles as hard-hitting journalism that readers deserve to know about when all it served uh, when all it serviced was traffic numbers and nothing more. On the flip side of the argument, we have Washington Post journalist Gene Park responding to a now-deleted tweet, um, and uh, he wrote, quote, oh, I didn't have his ready. I apologize. It's right here, though. Lifelong SPJ member here, I believe that is, um, oh, God. I'll look that up after this. I apologize. I forget what it's. It's it's like a it's a, it's a guild, I believe, like a, a union for journalists. Um, that gu guidance, uh, lifelong SPJ member here. That guidance wouldn't apply to product information. Planned X Men game is not info that endangers someone's safety. No proper media organization will cover the docs info of people, but ethically covering leaked information is fine. I understand this is. Uh, in response to something and it's confusing out of context but we're, we'll get to that in one of his uh, tweets i've said that i've been sympathetic to devs feeling bad about leaks but the information ecosystem we are forced to live in is merciless it has no sympathy for us open critic deleted the original tweet so he was actually responding to an open critic which of course open critic is a, a review conglomerate pretty much metacritic but the different it's but it's the same thing it's just a different version of metacritic owned by different people of course i believe very weird that they had any information on this at all but this is what he says open critic deleted it was weird to see such a take on a brand account someone got in their feelings and needed to post i understand that struggle as someone who could have who could once speak as a brand end quote so jim park uh being i in my opinion very human and honest and uh respectable to this person i don't know what they said i know i didn't get to see it before it was deleted, unfortunately, so I have nothing to cover in specifics. I'm going to quickly scroll through and see if someone has a... Nope, they don't. I wish they had a uh, screenshot that I could read, but I cannot. But uh, very weird that Open Critic said anything at all. Uh, very strange. Um, and if you can... I'm going to go ahead and prep this next one very quickly. Apologies. It, re it, you know, it like refreshed and ruined it. So sorry about that. Now, Chris Raygun, co-host of Sacred Symbols, retweeted Greg Miller's tweet that we um, just read earlier. Uh, he is, of course, the co-host of Sacred Symbols. He reads the uh, or he wrote the following quote. I appreciate the sentiment and employees personal information certainly shouldn't be aired out for everyone to see. But this is still news. There were many, many, many leaks this year in the gaming industry. And nobody had a problem covering them until now. That's weird to me. With Jez Corden, of course. Let me get his official title. I don't want to disrespect him. Um, his official title, of course, managing editor at Windows Central. It uh, just simply uh, said, agree to this. Uh, a, a quick glance from Jez. I didn't see any other way he talked about these today. He seemed to kind of say out of it, as far as I understand. But maybe, maybe he wrote something and I missed it. Now, I wanted to read all of that. And I gathered all of those quotes to give you a wide gambit of responses on this particular issue. So now, let's talk about this. So no more writing. No more uh, of, of me, you know, being embellishing and writing all my own things and, and uh, uh, you know, finding all these things. It's just me talking to you right now. So we're going to sit back, relax, and just talk about everything that happened after this. We, we, we talked about the news. We talked about, uh, of course, the discourse surrounding the news, and we had, the, of course, a little preamble before all this. And now we can just sit back, relax, and fully talk about what to. I guess I'll I'll start with my opinion on all of this. Now I think you can already gather my opinion on all this since I read you most of the actual news from this. Uh, I believe that we had a very interesting conversation around this as a gaming industry as a whole, kind of out of nowhere. But before I get into that specific, I want to read why I told, talked about any of this, right? One, it is the news, right? I don't really quite understand anyone saying this isn't news. Um, it's newsworthy. Um, let, you know what? Let's get the Webster Dictionary for news. News, Webster 
dictionary. Let's see. Maybe m- maybe there is something here that uh, that like we're missing or I'm not having fully understand. So news, of course, plural and form, but singular in construction. One A, a report of recent events. Per previously unknown information. It's one as well. That's B, one B, one C, something having a specified influence or effect. Hmm. Hmm. Now, if we're just going off the definition for that, I mean, this is undoubtedly news, right? I don't really get saying it isn't news just because it's a bad thing, right? This was a bad thing that happened. This was a breach. This is uh, condemned. Shouldn't happen. People shouldn't do this. They do it, but it happened, and we now have to live in the reality where it happened. There is no head-in-the-sand situation where we kind of sit here and pretend like, oh, you know, uh, I wish we knew what Insomniac was doing. We do. We know it now. It happened. We should move on. We should report on it, talk about it, and move on. Um, In my opinion, that's what I did. I talked about it, and now I'm going to move on. I'll reference this, I'm sure, a few times, but... Aside from that, you know, I'm done. I think we all should have reported on it and moved on. I, I find it strange. Um, I don't. I hope this doesn't come across as as rude, but you know, I don't really take you as seriously as a gaming news site if you don't report on the news, or at least you pick to report on on the gaming news. We already kind of struggle on actual gaming journalism in the games industry. Uh, most gaming journalists. I'll put in quotes again. I'm not trying to be mean here. I'm just giving my opinion here uh, and what I view as someone who has been uh, reading this and being very involved since I was 12 reading Gaming Former every month with my dad, uh, either in the car on the way to school or at home. Um, and we would always talk about it and, and discuss things. And of course, that wasn't that was journalism, but you know, not hardcore journalism or anything like that. So I've I've been here for a while reading all these things, and we don't really have many gaming journalists. We have Jason Schreier. We have uh, people that I feel like try to do journalism when they can. Rebecca Valentine is, comes to mind where she had that really great piece on Destiny a little bit ago, uh, doing like the hard work it is to get out and talk with people in these things and get quotes and in in all these things. And there's, of course, other people, but we're kind of struggling on actual journalism. So it's interesting to see so many people like clearly have like a, a like a stance on leaks where we had Capcom's leaks earlier this year that also had personal information. No one said anything about that. Uh, I wonder why. Is it maybe because it's Japanese and no one has friends in Capcom? I don't know what that is. I don't know why, but it's just weird. I'm just pointing that out. I'm not accusing a specific person. I will be accusing uh, someone in a little bit, but not in the way that I think will hopefully... Uh, it will come across. I'm, I'm not trying to accuse anyone specifically here. But I find it interesting that in the world where we don't really have a lot of great games, or that maybe I shouldn't be surprised that uh, we're kind of picking and choosing what news to write about. This is news. Whether, again, we like it or not how we got it, it is news. Um, you should have reported on it. If you're not, and you didn't, in, in my opinion, you aren't as a reputable gaming news source anymore, right? I already didn't really go to GameSpot. You know, it's this doesn't affect me going to GameSpot any more or less now. So I'm not going to pretend like, woe is me, GameSpot. I can't believe they do this. But it is strange that they're just like, oh, we're not going to talk about it. It's weird to me. But, of course, they can do whatever they want. VGC at least has a standard that they don't do this at all. And they are keeping to that. I also disagree with them. But they always seem very nice. They have great content. I go to VGC all the time for, one, the show, and two, personally, just to read stuff on there. So um, maybe that's favoritisms talking, but, you know, they could do what they want. I don't agree, but I still like their content, so it's not really going to affect how I interact with them at all. Uh, So I thought that was an important note. But, again, I do disagree fully. Leaks are important, and just because... And, and I, I think I understand what he means by this, but just because you're reporting on a breach of security doesn't mean you're amplifying the news of the p- personal information. That confuses me because no one will ethically know, like in Gene Park. 
did he he said this right yeah no proper media organization would cover the docs info of people but ethically covering leaked product info is fine it, i don't i can't think of a single gaming news site would that would give up doxed info right kotaku has done some shit writing but i wouldn't i i don't think they would ever do that uh, that would probably be the one person that maybe possibly could do it. And I really don't think anyone would do that. So I really don't quite understand what he means by that. Uh, Nick, in a similar sense, I get what you mean by like it was get gotten illicitly. But in theory, every leak is gi given illicitly. Everyone has an NDA. So technically, that's also a crime, right? So... Um, I don't see, I mean, there's a difference clearly. Sorry. I'm not trying to like say like it's the same thing, but if you sign an NDA and a lot of them are very serious NDAs and you leak information, I mean, you're still not supposed to do that. So what's the difference? There is a huge difference, but uh, one is incredibly criminal and, and one is technically, um, civilly uh liable i don't it's not a crime you don't like go to jail you just like you know you're civilly liable they could like sue you and make you pay money in these things rockstar is a big nintendo they're very litigious in those specific manners where they will go after you if if they find something out but i do want to um yeah but i wanted to highlight those specifics uh i did want to highlight um kind of funny really quick um as everyone who watches this knows, I'm a huge fan of Kind of Funny. I watch them a lot, not as much anymore as I did. It's just because time and I have a lot more people I like to watch versus just watching Kind of Funny when I, like I used to. Still support them on Patreon and things for the, you know, for the money and make sure that they're all having fun over there. And I like the, uh, I like Kind of Feudy. I, I really like that show. Um, so, um, I did want to bring them up specifically because I found it. Interesting in multiple parts. One, very damning. Two, not as damning if you just listen to what they talk about. So if you actually listen to what they say in the Kind of Funny Games Daily, like, little section of the show they have to the Insomniac Leaks, they're not really saying anything, like, crazy. They're not going to, like, pretend like this didn't exist or anything. They just didn't want to cover the specifics of the leaks on the day to give Insomniac the time of the day or something to, to let them heal and, like, make them feel better in these things and, and all these stuff. It does come across as preachy. Greg Miller is famously preachy, in my opinion. Again, I love him, right? He's fucking, you know, he's a great guy. He seems all in the up and up to me. But he can come across as very preachy. I mean, this he's done a lot of very preachy things uh, before. And, oh, the, and half of them, I agree with him. So, it, you know, I'm not, like, saying he's crazy or anything. It's just what he does. He, this is kind of his thing. He values his spokesman ship of the industry very seriously i believe and does authentically try to get across what he thinks are uh the best things i'm not saying i disagree with what he is saying but it is important that he is doing what he thinks is best not what he thinks he should say or anything like that i at least i believe um i disagree with a lot of he says but i agree with what he says so it doesn't really matter to me he can do whatever he wants he is millionaire probably at this point uh, so he's fine uh, he does, he does, he could do, he's in the part where he does whatever he wants, and he's trying to make kind of funny big, I get that. It's just strange to see that insomnia, and this would all, this always looks bad, regardless of how this goes, right? Greg Miller doing this specifically with Insomniac looks pretty bad, because you've covered all the other ones, right? Uh, Capcom, I believe, also had employee leaked documents. Um, I should have checked that before, I apologize, I didn't, but I'm pretty sure it did. And regardless, they've covered leaks before and them being in Spider-Man 1 and 2 as, I wouldn't say cameos, but Easter eggs, because they don't voice anything. But he's featured in 1 and 2, and I'm sure he has friends there in these things, and clearly he is close friends with people there. Uh, and again, he has all the right to do this, but that is probably why a lot of people jumped down this guy's throat over the weekend Sorry, not the weekend. Over the day of all this happening, saying like, well, you report on this and this and this. Because, you know, it does seem favoritist if that was 
what they're going for. If that wasn't what they're going for, it's regardless of what they're going for, it's going to look that way. It's going to look like they're playing favorites because one, it's Insomniac. They were in the game, so it's going to look bad, right? Regardless of if they're being truthful or not. I think they are. I think they really are trying to be truthful with this. Uh, they said that, you know, they'll be going with Lee. I will have to see, like, if this matters, but like, I'd be honest, like, this isn't the kind of funny show, so I'm already getting too in the weeds with it, I, I imagine. So I want to cut it down to he was kind of the main guy that preached this. I keep saying preached. I try not to be negative here. Um, he, you know, he was the klaxon call. He, he Everyone retweeted his thing, right, sp saying their piece on this, whether it was them agreeing or, or someone thanking them uh, uh saying like how much this meant to them etc etc you know and of course the people on the other side being upset upset of course chris reagan uh retweeting and appreciating the sentiment but it's definitely not the same thing and i have to agree with the overall sentiment of a lot of people saying i don't get why this wasn't news to everyone because it's not like as you saw with what I did, at no point did I ever see anyone's personal info. Um, I don't think anyone really is getting that. I'm sure the people who want that aren't don't probably care about the gaming news. They're probably sickos online. So it's strange that we think we're amplifying this specific section of this. But um, again, I urge you, if you have a opinion on this, just go watch their whole thing. I think they actually have a pretty measured response to this, honestly. Whereas the one and a half minute thing makes it seem like they are being incredibly for Insomniac for this. Whereas they're actually technically trying to say like, no, you know, we're trying to keep it measured. But again, it was always going to look bad because they're in the game. So, yeah. It's like a, you know, it's kind of a lose-lose situation. If they reported on it, everyone would have complained that they reported on it. If they don't report on it, they get to say they're sh showing favorites. So, honestly, at this point, they were probably a lose-lose. They were probably trying to show favorites. And they're not a news site. So, at the end of the day, their, uh, their um, personalities, you know, they're not... IGN. IGN reported on it, which I believe they should, like I've already said. Kind of funny, did their thing. They don't want to do it. They don't have to. They're not a news site. They're a conglomerate. Not conglomerate. That's the wrong word. They're a... Um, what's the word? Con uh, they, they, they gather the news and tell you every day, like, what are the news? Now, uh, you could argue that they're now less... Uh, they're they're less reliable now because they didn't tell you the news this time. But I think that's kind of semantics and they still referenced it. So you could have went and looked at what you wanted to do. And they still saw it. Said, um, I believe it was blessing on that show actually said, like, you know, he's seen things because it's just on Twitter. So, like, he can't escape it. So, you know, he, he knows things and they're just not going to talk about it like right now. But they'll talk about it at, on like their respective shows and these things. So. Now that that's done, because that was kind of the central hub for all of this, that one a minute 30 video with like uh, a handful of words attached to it that everyone uh, had like their two cents to talk about. Now that's done. Uh, I did want to round out and, and kind of just leave my thoughts with you all and kind of reiterate the news is news. Everyone who reported on it should have. If you didn't report on it, you probably should have. But I'm not I'm not. I'm not here to say you should do anything. At the end of the day, you guys run it. I don't really care. I really go for the news that I think I, I need to know from these sites. And if I don't think I will find it, I can usually just go to a source and figure it out. So I'm not really too worried about that. We've had this gaming journalism problem for a very long time. We really don't have many journalists to even speak of. Uh, so it's not even a new problem. Maybe people are finally realizing it, that we really only have a bunch of people reading from PR statements, um, PR newsletters, uh, re reiterating release dates and all these things. We, we have very few people actually finding quotes in the background, looking through news sources to find uh, like 
what was the inner workings of Bobby Kotick and, and, and what was it like working under him? And, and here's five people doing X, Y thing, zing thing under Activision Blizzard, what they think about the, you know, this, I mean, you can, there's millions of stories out there. We don't really see them that often because we don't really have many journalists. We have a lot of people who, you know, work at these sites, but don't really want to do the journalist part. They want to be hosts or, or these things. So it's not a new problem. Uh, hopefully we fix it together uh, so we can kind of be more uh, adult. Uh, I do want to quickly speak on, I understand, uh, and the usual people do come out for this. It does bother me, frankly, a little bit that uh, the usual people come out to say like, <laughs> um, you know, I want to be surprised about the games and things, so I, sh I shouldn't read it. And I understand that from a consumer standpoint. But if you have any validity to where you stand, I mean, if you want to talk about things seriously in the gaming industry, I feel like you should know some of these things. There are inherently interesting things. We just talked about incredibly interesting sales data, a complete financial measuring breakdown of how Venom will sell, what that means for their metrics, their return on ROI, what it means to break out Spider-Man 3 in two parts instead of one, and how that will maximize their sales and all these things. I haven't even gotten to that that I wanted to talk a little bit about. Um, so... To cap it all, I think it was productive, to say the least, for the for the day that everyone kind of sat down and talked. I think um, it's very strange that this is the one we had all had a problem with. I think it's weird that we covered all the other ones, Grand Theft Auto 6, uh, without anyone really uh, complaining too, too much. We had a couple people complaining about leaks because they want to be surprised. And I, <laughs> I'm sorry, it's just hard. Whenever I read that, and maybe I'm too cynical, and I'm really not trying to be rude, but every time I see like, oh my god, I, I but I, it, it was ruined for me, and it's just like, god, like, like you really like, you're sad that they didn't advertise to you better. Like it's just weird to me that that's a problem. Like you're sad that I wasn't PR'd or something. It's just I don't know. I get being excited for things, but to be uh it, it, like so against so so for being excited that you're against actual news and newsworthy things in places of importance if you're a regular consumer it, it I don't you do whatever you want but being in places of power for lack of a better word in the games industry and being and sitting on soapboxes and complaining like I wasn't advertised better because I knew it before and I wanted to be excited. It, it like, ah, ah, that's a little weird to me. I think we sh I think we should grow up a little and be able to talk about things like this, especially when it's very, very interesting things like sales data, like um, like uh, how different projects get greenlit and taken back and. Uh, what does like raw concept art look like when they're really just talking about the vagaries of what the game might be and it's still just an idea in someone's head? How did that come to the screen and all these things, right? We could talk about those things without having to talk about that Jim John from marketing's phone number was this and this is where he lives. You know, I don't I don't think me reporting on any of this and I'm, I'm not pretending I, I'm important. I'm not saying that at all, but I'm not saying I, me reporting on this amplified anyone's personal information so um and maybe i'm incorrect i'd love to be challenged on that if someone thinks they can but i think i've uh i think i've said my piece i think we talked about a lot of interesting things here uh i'm very interested in that sale and in the sales data it, it, it really goes to show you that we we get a lot of or at least the Game devs put a lot of thought into how much they will sell. And I mean, this is probably very, very expensive uh, economic. Uh, I forget what they're called, but they're like groups where you pay a group and they like run like theories in these and and like guess the market and be like, well, you know, Venom hitting here, here. This is probably how much units you'll sell around here and here. Uh, and you know, it won't make this much money. It'll probably make this much. And think about how much, uh, thought was put into the Spider-Man, uh, uh, three being two parts. Like that's a lot of thought. They put a lot of theoretical, um, economics into 
this is what happens if we sell it in two parts. We will not lose money. We will gain money. It will take us more money to make the game. But at the end of the day, we will nearly... Uh, not double, but we will uh, add a third extra of net sales. Now, of course, net sales. Who cares about net sales? You want to you know how much money you're actually making, etc. But all that being said, I hope you enjoyed the my thoughts on everything. Um, I I love discussing the more ethereal parts of the gaming industry, where we're talking about how everyone on Twitter is either for or against something. There's no in between. Um, I find that uh, always incredibly interesting when people are are getting wildly upset for certain things. I. I think it's something that we all gain positively from when we talk about it this way. Uh, so I hope this has opened either some dialogues for you at home with maybe a significant other or a close friend, or maybe this opening a dialogue between you and me in the comments below or Twitter at EVM9000. Uh, EVM and we can talk about this uh, more free form if you'd like. Uh, of course, this is an open discussion. And remember, this is, of course, YouTube, so you know what to do. Like, comment, subscribe, share with a friend. Uh, if you want to talk about the Insomniac League scale, make sure you share this video with them. Um, and thank you so much for your time today. I hope you have a happy holiday and enjoy time with either your family or your friends or however you celebrate it. Make sure you have um, a great time. I will see you guys very soon, as I do still plan on trying to do a regular episode. Uh, for this week so you're not without content for your christmas break i know some people like having some content after the christmas i know i do so i try not to leave you guys uh out in the air uh wet and wet and whatever whatever the saying is i forget it is this is isn't it out in the cold or something out in the something ah, okay it's, it's not important aside from that thank you so much for stopping by and until the next time go